welcome. By popular demand, in this video, I'm doing a behind the scenes look at my YouTube setup, this talking head angle, and all of the gear that it takes to make this happen. I'll split it into three sections, video, audio, and then workflow. And I hope you find the insight interesting, helpful, and most importantly, entertaining. I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bit you want. And it would really make my day if you could just hit that subscribe button. I'm kind of making my way towards 100,000 subscribers. And honestly, that would just mean the world to me. So thanks in advance for that. This video is also not sponsored, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. And the way that works is any funds from Patreon go back into the channel, I buy gear, I do unbiased reviews, and then I give the gear to my backers via a giveaway. And that's a fantastic way to help the channel and um, you know you can win some cool stuff. So all of that information down below. So let's kick off with the video setup and I've set up my B camera. So welcome, this is my space. My A camera is my Sony A7S III. The lens I'm using is a Sigma 35 millimeter F1.4 art. And I am using a little bit of ND. Uh, I've got the aperture at around usually to f2.5. I use some ND so that I can get the perfect balance of um, depth of field and exposure. Um, what you can see at, uh, in front of my lens is the HNY Revo Ring slash Swift system, which I reviewed previously. Um, in fact, I've probably reviewed everything that I'm going to mention in, in this video, and I will link everything below for you as well. I've got a nice uh, monitor. You can probably see it um, from the wide. Uh, that is the OC Megamon 15 and it's incredible. I don't really use small monitors anymore if I'm filming uh, in my studio because the better you can see what you're doing, the better your angles are going to look. That's just, that's my opinion anyway. So I've got that set up um, and that is attached to one of my light stands, but you know, lighting we'll get to in a bit. I've got this main angle on my main Manfrotto tripod, which, you know, it, I've had forever. It's fairly chunky, but not the chunkiest. And I'm really working at trying to work out if there's a reason for me to upgrade, because I know there's some fantastic ones out there, but this just does the job. So, you know, if it works. And then we have my lights. You can see this one here, this is the Aperture 600D, and I've got the Light Dome uh, SE not the Light Dome 2, and um, the reason for that is because it's the same in terms of the look, and it's way cheaper. So that's an amazing tip. If you don't need to fold it down and travel with it, if you're just gonna leave it up, get the SE, don't bother with the Light Dome 2. Good advice right there. And then on this side, you can see, just you can just about see in the corner, that is the Aperture 300D Mark I. And it's a good light, but it's a little bit noisy. So that's one I will change at some point. And I've got a Light Dome Mini up there. Um, and that's fantastic too, for what it is. It gives a really nice light just for a little bit of fill. And then you can see over the top, I've got the Zyun Molus G60 up the top, if you can see up here. And I've wall mounted it. Um, and this is just an amazing addition. It's a tiny little, very, um, cool looking light that I've got uh, the hyper reflector uh, attached and it's acting as a hair light and it's fantastic and I can also I can access that from the app so I can adjust the brightness from there it's really good and then of course from this camera you can see I've got a few practical lights I've got my um, a big Edison bulb which I just love I know it's a bit a bit cheesy these days but I still love it and then you can see behind my computer and on this side I've got just a couple of LED strips and they just add a little bit of warm fill and a few of the kind of the specular highlight kind of uh, bokeh blobs which I like as well so it, it yeah it's simple but I, work, I, I like it, it works. I think that's it for video, but I, I sh I'm sure I may have missed something. So just um, if you uh, notice something that I missed, ask me and I will reply. Next, let's go onto audio. You can see I have uh, attached to my ACAM all the time, the Deity D4 Duo. And that is one of the most cool design products that I've 
I've reviewed in terms of you know on camera microphones because it can shoot you know be showing you something from from my view uh, and it will be picking up my voice and from the front and it's just so cool um, that just stays on there all the time for scratch audio because it's just better quality uh, than the built-in mic on the camera and then you may have noticed this this is a relatively new addition to my uh, setup this is the warm audio wa47 and it's it's kind of one of the nicest sounding microphones that i've ever used it's it's very like vintage sounding it's very kind of fat and warm the other thing i like is it rolls off top end and although i have used some acoustic treatment around the room you know, this helps if you ever get uh, that kind of, uh, just a little bit of the room uh, top end. It can kind of just take that off and it's just silky and lovely. And I've got this attached to a solid stand with a counterweight. Uh, and that's important because this is a tube microphone and it's quite heavy, so I need it. This signal, I record directly to Logic on my computer. And I do that because I, really don't like um, anything to do with audio going straight onto my uh, SD card in my camera because uh, just the quality of all the components that go that are in you know the preamps in a camera um, the converters in a camera they're all pretty terrible compared to a dedicated interface and let's talk about my chain so I've got the uh, I've got this uh, tube microphone that goes into my Heritage Audio Brit Strip, which you can see here. That's a preamp, it's an EQ, and it's a compressor all based on Neve circuitry, which are really good. If you're not sure what Neve is, then um, you're probably not an audio guy. <laughs> uh, so why would you know? But it's, um, it's highly regarded, it's all you need to know. That then goes into my SSL 12 interface which I reviewed the SSL 12 recently. I reviewed the Heritage Audio Britstep recently. They're all fantastic. And this is a killer recording chain for my voiceover work and I love it. As I said, it goes into Logic and I've got this running with the screen off um, and I know that nothing's gonna happen. It's just gonna keep recording until I unlock the screen and hit stop. Um, whereas if I use the handheld recorder, batteries can run out, you know, uh, I can run out of space. It probably wouldn't happen on the SD card, but you never know. So I'd, I like it that way. I think the quality is just higher overall, and I like all of the plugins that I can use when I edit uh, my vocals um, after the fact. And the, the resulting quality, I mean, it makes a difference, basically. In my experience from doing hundreds and hundreds of these videos, this is the best way that I've recorded my uh, audio ever. Now this might look a little chaotic on, on the wide, but uh, you know, I've actually got quite a logical setup going. This tripod usually lives here, and this is what I do all my product shots on here. Uh, then my microphone, this is the only one that folds away and that goes in this corner over here. It just goes out the way in the corner and um, I even, I just wrap the cable up and, and that's just stored over there. That leaves us pretty clear, pretty sort of a pretty free space. There is more room in that side of the room, which you can't see. Um, but you know, this light box just gets pushed over there out the way. And you know, oh, the cars, sorry, you probably heard that on the mic. This um, light dome gets pushed out the way and uh, it, it just leaves basically the whole space free. So set up and pack down is very fast. We're talking, I don't know, maybe maybe 10 minutes, just you know, start to finish. Um, so that just, yeah, that, I love that from a work for a workflow point of view. Now you can't see this because it's, it's kind of blocked by this camera, but I, I usually just, I keep my phone just there. I don't use a, a teleprompter. I have done in the past, I no longer do. And the reason for that is I find that you can tell when people use them, I can tell anyway, I don't know about you, something about the way, the, the timing of their sentences, you can tell they, they take a pause and you can, you can almost see them reading a screen and I don't think that's right. I also love that, 
you know, I've got a rough, a rough script that I don't really stick to. And with a teleprompter, that doesn't allow for spontaneity and, you know, moment, the momentary creativity. Do you know what I mean? So I like to do it this way and it works for me. I guess I just like to embrace the chaos, embrace the imperfection in my videos. Um, so that's it. I think I might have covered everything. I've recently done videos about my acoustic treatment in this room, so that will be linked. Do check that out. And I've also done uh, another video about how I set my compression on my vocal tracks. Uh, so I definitely recommend watching both of those. They'll be linked below. Actually, tell you what, I'll link them both as the two clickable videos at the end of this video. So watch out for that. I will make sure they're there. To sum up, my setup is a really fine balance of being able to produce high quality content, but also having the space workable and uh, clear and, and streamlined, you know, being able to set up and pack down quickly. That's really the key. But you know, I admit, I'll be the first to admit, this space is far from perfect and I'm always looking for ways to improve it. And this is where I wanna hear from you. I am all ears, I'm open-minded and I want to know how you would improve this space. Honestly, all suggestions, let's, um, let's get a good conversation going. Pop it down below and I'd love to hear from you. That's it for now. Of course, I've made hundreds of videos like this, so do check out the others on my channel. The two videos that I mentioned earlier, I have linked right here, so do, you know, grab yourself a hot drink and, you know, enjoy. Anyway, until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. I'll see you guys.